Ah, yes, this one should be interesting. Normally I bash the left for being stupid and delusional. Now I'm going to bash Republican. Except he's not really a Republican, he's just a shill. And what's worse is he's not even American. So this takedown is going to feature a never Trump a Remainer Englishman versus an absolute monarchist Trump supporting South African discussing American politics. <laughs> what a great time to be alive, people. So we'll be looking at an article from Dan Hannon, who some of my English subscribers may know. Now, to give you some info on his so-called Republican supporting credentials, this man, aside from being a never Trumper, has also defended George Soros, mass migration, big money donations, and described Corbyn as a decent and honest fellow. So he's about as Republican as Fidel fucking Castro. For most of my life, I was a bigger supporter of the US Republicans than of my own party, the British Conservatives. The two parties were similar in many ways, but Tories had a weakness for hierarchy, deference, and tradition, while Republicans struck me as radicals and individualists, heirs to Tom Paine rather than Edmund Burke. Hmm. Weakness for hierarchy, deference, and tradition, you say. Funny that, a month passes, and so does the Queen, and this shameless, utterly self-awareness-lacking shithead pens an article, Why America Could Use a Constitutional Monarchy. I have no words. Former President Donald Trump was painfully at odds with the philosophy of the GOP, a party to which he had come late and opportunistically, where his predecessors had sought to limit government... He liked to mobilize the full resources of the state against people who crossed him. Show me even a single example of where he mobilized the state to persecute political rivals, you sell a two-faced sackless sack of shit. Fuck's sake, spin is one thing, but this is just straight up lying. And which predecessor sought to limit government exactly? Care to show some examples? Sure as hell wasn't Reagan, wasn't Nixon either. Hell, the last Republican president to warn of impending dangers with a modicum of credibility was the military-industrial complex, and that was Eisenhower post the Second World War in the early 1960s. There was something unmanly about the way his erstwhile conservative critics rushed to abase themselves before him, abandoning their previous convictions and raging at the handful of Reaganite commentators who stuck to theirs. <laughs> Says the Englishman, for God, Queen, and Country, you also follow a single leader. In fact, for most of the history of our species, we've done that. You're trying to say past generations were less manly than ours. We are with you, sire. For Sparta. For freedom. To the death. It's an honor to die at your side. It's an honor to have lived at yours. Apparently, that's unmanly, but bending over and spreading your ass cheeks for the Republican wing of the Uniparty and using your asshole as a sperm bank, that's standing up for so-called principles. I continue to believe that, had the Republicans seized any of their numerous opportunities to ditch the Donald and replace him with former Vice President Mike Pence, they would now hold both Congress and the White House. <laughs> and I will continue to believe you're a delusional idiot. But I never gave up on the party itself. When I spoke privately to its leading figures, including several who in public went along with Trump's most boorish, cowardly, and self-centered pronouncements because they're fucking opportunists, I was reassured that they were still Republicans in the basic sense of recognizing that the Republic is bigger than the people running it. Yes, and the citizens of that Republic overwhelmingly favored Trump to lead the party. He is an over 90% in public approval, which is a crushing majority. So, if you wish to serve the Republic like a good public servant, you would do well to stand by the man that commands the voice of the people, or you can resign yourself to being plundered booty. Now I'm starting to wonder. Their response to the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago makes me doubt whether the party is still in any sense constitutionalist. Rallying to the defense of their Cadulo, congressmen, Fox News anchors, and talk show hosts are calling for the FBI to be defunded or disbanded. Conservative agitators strive to outdo one another in their outrage, without, as far as I can tell, expressing any curiosity about whether Trump has in fact broken the law. Because they've been saying this for over six years and the boy who cried wolf has set sail fucking ages ago, and you are a shitty journalist. By the time you read these words, you will probably know more about the FBI raid than I do. Let me rephrase that. By the time you read these words, you will probably know more than I do. <laughs> That's better. Maybe it has to do with the tawdry events of January 6th. Maybe the warrant was issued for a small thing in the hope of turning up a bigger one. You do realize by that admission they found nothing in the January 6th committee, and this raid is a sham excuse to look for the so-called evidence that doesn't exist. Well done, you just defeated your own bloody argument. What a genius. Maybe the Bureau has screwed up completely. Heaven knows it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Case in point. 
One thing, though, should be beyond dispute. The same rules should apply to Trump as to any other American. Former presidents do not have a special status in law. Actually, they do, especially when it comes to being potential political candidates in the future, as well as former presidents who had the capacity of being the head of state to declassify material. You would think you would know this. Yet Republicans at every level seem affronted at the idea of searching the house of a private citizen. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder why. Yes, federal agencies can be biased. Evidently, so can you, you wanker. The IRS ended up having to apologize to the conservative organizations it has subjected to heightened scrutiny and inordinate delays during the Obama years. But there is no evidence that the FBI has gone rogue. If you write that as a journalist, you should be expelled out of a cannon into the sun, never to be heard from ever again. The issuing of a warrant is no small thing. Let me quote the Fourth Amendment, sorry to be forever citing your constitution, but it's a bloody good document that I wish Americans would cite more often. No warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. If, though the FBI has not screwed up, if Trump has in fact broken the law, there's no evidence he has, then surely he should be treated like any other criminal. That's what living in a free republic means. <laughs> By the way, this all was written prior to the release of the affidavit and he hasn't said jack shit since. Hmm, I wonder why. Listen to how quickly Republicans have dropped their pro-law and order views. Here is Representative Paul Gosar of Arizona during the Black Lives Matter and Antifa riots of 2020. I unequivocally back the blue and will oppose any bill, resolution, or movement that calls to defund the police. Here he is today. I will support a complete dismantling and elimination of the Democrat brown shirts known as the FBI. Here is Representative Jeff Duncan of South Carolina. Then it's a sad and scary day in America when we have citizens calling to defund and dismantle the police. And here he is now. The FBI has proven time and again that it is corrupt to the core. At what point do we have to abolish the bureau and start over? Here, you knew it was coming, is the egregious representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia last year. Crime is exploding in the Democrat-run cities. This is 100% the result of their left-wing policies of defunding the police, backing BLM, Antifa, destroying families, and coddling of criminals. And here she is now. Defund the FBI. <sighs> My lord, this man is so fucking stupid, it's astounding. Did the FBI go after any members of BLM or Antifa who did billions of dollars worth of private property damage during the summer of the 2020 riots? No. The FBI, as the name suggests, is a federal apparatus, you fucking imbecile. They are not calling for the dismantling of local and state law enforcement. Oh, yeah, this novice level of political understanding is just embarrassing. There was a time when journalists would ask whether Trump's latest outrage would finally push Republicans away from him, mocking the late Senator John McCain's military record, no, that's just base, lying about his tax return, yeah, insulting the family of a fallen U.S. serviceman, which won, refusing to accept an election result, as if the Democrats never do that themselves. This time, no one is asking. Donald Trump has not changed, but he has changed his party, malignly, and it seems permanently to a party that doesn't back down and gave it teeth, balls, and a spine which the GOP hasn't seen in fucking decades. Now please shut the hell up and return to Britain and keep your abysmal, uneducated opinions to yourself, you're a disgrace. And... You are fake news. Thank you, President Trump. And that is all for today, and I will see you all next time.